This video is my first look at the main event for UFC 276 uh, between Jared Cannonier and Israel Adesanya. Um, I'm going to focus this video, to be honest with you, on Jared Cannonier, and, and I'm approaching this from a somewhat different angle than I usually do with mixed martial arts stuff. Um, my football breakdowns, I, I watch film and I, I try to break down each individual aspect that I recognize, that I am aware of, and certainly there's some things that I miss, but I, I, I call it's a film study. For MMA, it's it's generally been commentary. I'm I'm attempting to do a pseudo film study with this one, and it's really focused on Jared Cannonier. What I did was, I sat and watched uh, five of his fights, um, not necessarily his five most recent fights, although it, it actually might be. I watched his fights, uh, middleweight fights against Kelvin Gastelum, Anderson Silva, uh, Robert Whitaker, and then Derek Brunson. And of course, he won three of those fights, two of them by finish against Silva and Brunson. And then I also watched his light heavyweight fight against Jan Blahovich. Um, I did not watch it. Watch his fight against Reyes. Uh, maybe I could have. I think the dynamics of his fight with Adesanya are different, and I I do think that he's a dangerous opponent. To be honest with you, uh, some of the patterns that emerge, and I can't really show video uh, for obvious reasons. I am going to show pictures, however. Uh, some of the patterns that I think emerged. Uh, point one is I think he has trouble with the jab thrown from an orthodox stance. To be honest with you. Um. John Blahovich and Whitaker both were able to land the jab, keep distance. Um, even on moments when Cannoneer would enter, you know, striking space, he would immediately be met with a jab by Whitaker. It was almost used as like an interrupt jab. Now, Silva didn't lead much, um, and that fight only went, you know, almost one round. He was in his field out process in round one. And Gastelum, Gastelum certainly attacked plenty, but he was attacking from a southpaw stance. Blahovich definitely had a size advantage on Cannoneer at 205 and used the jab to control distance. Um, and he also gave Cannoneer problems with takedowns. I think he got four takedowns in that fight. Cannoneer didn't um, didn't really shoot for any takedowns. He's not a wrestling guy, although he spoke about wrestling and certainly you would think he would use it against, um, against you know, Israel Adesanya. Um, Jan, in some ways, is a weird comparison because of his size. And, and of course, Adesanya is tall, but there's not going to be any threat of a takedown from Adesanya whatsoever. But Whitaker was also able to chew him up with the jab and keep distance. Anyway, uh, one of the things I would like to talk about is that Cannon, Jared Cannonier goes southpaw often. And uh, this is be point number two. And his offense is really, really limited when he does. And I think that is a... Um, an extreme example of the type of fighter that he is. And here's what I mean. When he goes southpaw, uh, it's either a right hook lead or a jab. And, and, and then there's a rear leg kick, which will be his left leg. But it's kind of whippy and doesn't have the same thud and power as his orthodox rear leg kick, which would be with his right leg. Um, in the five fights that I watched, he doesn't really offer any other attack when he goes southpaw than a right hook lead or a right jab. That's all I saw. Um, now, he did land, you see here against Gaston. He landed with the lead hook and hurt him. And this subject, if you ask me, Cannoneer switching to southpaw, it is a, it's basically showing you what he is from an, extre an extreme standpoint. So what I mean is when he's in an orthodox stance, he's still generally a one-handed fighter from a power and explosive standpoint. I just do not see the left hand and he does throw some jabs occasionally from a from an orthodox stance, but he just he just does not look like he has much to offer in terms of explosive striking, unless it's the le the right hand. Excuse me. Um, another point that I'd like to make is I thought he was this would be point number three. I thought he was he was losing explosiveness, losing power near the end of rounds in some of the fights that I watched against. Against Gastelum, I think even round two, maybe round three, he's looking up at the clock late in a round. Um, and, I, and I thought there was a couple of other situations where he did that as well. So at that time, after watching two or maybe three fights, I thought to myself, okay, he doesn't have a cardio issue, really. It doesn't look like that at all. But it definitely looked like he was mentally tracking how much time was left in the rounds. And then my third fight that I watched after Gastelum and Silva was him against Robert Whitaker. And to me, it looked like he was clearly down 2-0 to zero against Whitaker. Clearly. But every judge had it 1-1 through two rounds, if you look at their scorecards. And um, Whitaker hurts him bad early in the third round. Hurt, hurts Cannoneer badly. 
mounted him, uh, took his back, worked for a rear naked. Uh, but Cannoneer regained his senses and powered out of it. And then it's late in the round. I think it's like 40 seconds left. We're on the way, in my opinion, to a 3-0 shutout. But again, the judges had it 1-1. And at that point, I thought round three was maybe a 10-8, you know, because he, he really hurt him, you know, got him down on the ground, had the back, uh, working for a rear naked choke. And we know that Whitaker, Whitaker is a way better grappler than, than he shows sometimes. He just doesn't grapple that much because he likes to strike. And then all of a sudden, Cannoneer just stuns Whitaker late in the fight by, again, switching to southpaw and throwing a right jab. It landed hard, and it shook Whitaker, um, who kind of stood there and, and nearly ate a follow-up right hook from the same southpaw stance. It was a, thankfully, it was a three-round three, three round fight, thankfully for Whitaker. Um, now, that most judges still gave Whitaker the third round. I think he, he basically bled the time out by shooting for a takedown and pinning Cannoneer up against the fence. Um, I still so I still had Cannoneer really losing the third round I think on all the judges scorecards at least but it was a moment where Cannoneer had to go for a finish showed that he still had some explosiveness which goes against my early theory that he kind of loses that explosiveness late in the round but the larger point is what did he do when he needed that he went to the right hand and it seems to he went southpaw and led with the right specifically um, I'm not saying he doesn't have a jab or a left hook of his own from an orthodox stance, but I think when he's hurt people, when he's looked his most dangerous with his boxing, it's with his right hand, either as a, a counter um, from an orthodox stance, stance or as a lead right from a southpaw stance. And I'm not being negative about Cannoneer because I think he's a tough and dangerous fighter, and I think he can challenge Adesanya with the right strategy. But at, at the highest level, in the fights that I watched, again, it was five fights, he looked like a one-handed fighter in terms of evaluating his power and ability to hurt people. So, you know, having said that, maybe he'll hurt Adesanya with a left hook and then win the 185 title. But from the fights that I saw, he has tendencies that I think might be used against him by a guy as, as intelligent as Adesanya. And then I watched the Derek Brunson fight. And I saw some interesting things that, again, went against my earlier conceptions in terms of him tiring late in rounds. Um... And similar to the Whitaker fight, Hananier got hurt bad. It was near the end of the first round. Brunson, Brunson had worked through a bunch of takedown attempts and was able to hurt Cannoneer with a right counter in the middle of a charge by Cannoneer. Uh, Brunson almost finished him with a, with a rear naked uh, in the first round, almost finished him. And, um, and Cannoneer was clearly hurt, clearly hurt in between rounds, and, I, and the round ended. And I thought Brunson came out in the first 20 seconds of round two Almost like he thought the fight was over. Like he thought Cannoneer had nothing left and he was going to go take him down and finish him. And I believe he took him down and Cannoneer popped right back up and just took over. And he did it all with his striking. And, but it shouldn't be any surprise, it was all right-hand stuff. There was two jabs from an orthodox stance by Cannoneer. One of them landed, and I think the other one kind of you know, just glanced off Brunson. And then you know a lead leg kick with his left that kind of landed on the way by. And then uh, Cannoneer just hurts Brunson with a right hook from a southpaw stance again. I thought he tried to throw a straight left in that exchange from a southpaw stance, but it just didn't look sharp, didn't look crisp. And, and I might be wrong, might be wrong, but if he goes southpaw, I only see one weapon that Adesanya has to be aware of, and that's the lead right jab or the left hook. And then you look at the, uh, the combo. One of the things that Whitaker did when Whitaker hurt him in the third round of their fight, it was the instant that Cannoneer went southpaw. The moment he went southpaw, Whitaker threw a one-two and then a head kick because you know he w it was an open stance, meaning they're, they're open toward each other. The, the rear leg body kick is available to either fighter because they're open. They're in opposite stances. And Cannoneer ducked right into it. So I wonder if that might be a blueprint for Adesanya in terms of how to hurt him. But he's a strong guy, and I don't think he'll go out from just one well-placed shot to be honest, it'll, it'll probably take an accumulation of shots to finish this guy if, the, if, if Adesanya is able to get him there. Kind of like, like Adesanya did against uh, Paulo Costa. Paulo Costa, who you know, is incredibly strong and, and way too big for a 185 guy. Uh, but in any case, two of the five fights I look at, Cannoneer was nearly finished or he was in deep trouble, Whitaker and Brunson. And Brunson's clearly not in the same class as Whitaker and, and, or nor Adesanya at middleweight. Uh, but both of those guys are on the verge of finishing Cannoneer. 
And in both cases, Cannoneer charges back. And I think there's something to be said for that. Mentally strong, um, doesn't cave, doesn't give in um, after nearly getting finished himself. And, and will fire back when he's hurt. So he has that recovery type of endurance that not many guys do and incredibly strong. I don't, I don't think there's a better fighter. I don't, I don't think he's even close to the fighter that Adesanya is. However, there's one thing that is interesting. Cannoneer, it, it, from what I know about him, it sounds like he's always been a guy who is not necessarily an offensive wrestler. And I think the things I've talked about, if you sat, if you stuck around this long, it, it, he's generally limited with his options in terms of boxing, striking. Now, he's got strong rear leg kicks from an orthodox stance. Look at what he did to Anderson Silva, you know, finishing that fight with a leg kick. So, you know, is Adesanya going to be available to have those leg kicks landed on him consistently? I don't think so. You know, I just don't. But, you know, he has that. That is in Jared Cannonier's arsenal. My point is, strategically, he probably has to go toward what John Blahovich did. Now, Blahovich did some really good things on the feet. A very um, versatile guy who seems to be good at everything. So shocking looking back that he was able to whitewash Adesanya because, you know, the very next fight, Glover Teixeira <laughs> chokes out Jan Blahovich. So I think the strategy there is. It, 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 I think it's probably possible that Cannoneer's people have looked at it and said, hey, our options on the feet are limited, and we may have to go the wrestling route. And some of the things that Cannoneer has said even indicate such. Um, and, but he's not ever been in there attempting takedowns against the guys that I watched in these five fights, which are recent fights for him. Um, but that goes against, again, that strat. If he doesn't do that, that goes against the strategy that Jan Blahovic kind of put out there for Adesanya. And I, that was a crazy fight. It, it was, if I remember correct, Blahovich had a 10-8 fifth round on two cards. And he won the fight going away, 49-45, 49-46, twice, if I remember right. Cannoneer certainly has the, the strength and explosiveness to change levels during a uh, striking exchange and get Adesanya down. But does he want to? Is that part of the plan? If not, I think he's making a tactical mistake. I think it should be. Even if he doesn't get the takedown, meaning Cannoneer, even if he doesn't get the takedown, what he will do is he'll make Adesanya have to react to the level change and defend it and be a little bit more conservative in certain situations with his striking. And that, that to me, is the real effect. And, and trying to then maybe later on make a level change and then throw a right hand. Make a level change and throw an overhand right as Adesanya is anticipating a shot. I do not think this is a five-round fight. I mean, it is a five-round fight. I don't think it goes five rounds unless the threat of the takedown by Cannoneer is just nothing. Unless Adesanya can easily and cleanly sprawl on him and avoid takedowns and just picks him apart and Cannoneer has no options. I feel like this is a fight where Cannoneer has to go out and try to get an early takedown or at least put that threat in Adesanya's mind. And, and then build from there and maybe use that to parlay or build the foundation of a level change and then a big strike to try to hurt him. I just don't see Jared Cannonier as a guy who can do what Jan Blahovich did over a five-round period because I think his, his striking options are limited on the feet. That's just what I think. I think he's got to change the dynamic of the fight either by getting an early takedown, the first round, something like that, maybe early second, and or landing a hard shot to get Adesanya's attention. That second piece of that might be a low percentage play. Plan plan 1A should be to make Adesanya aware of the takedown, maybe even get one. What's the what's the drawback? Adesanya's not a submission threat off the back. That's the problem when Adesanya's game. If you get him, it's not that like he's terrible on the ground, nobody's saying that, but he's not a submission threat. So you get him down and there's not there's no threat of you being finished there. You are safe if you're on top. And if Adesanya sprawls, then you know you you work back it. You go back to Plan One A or Plan One B, which is you know level change and then throw some strikes up top because you're limited anyway. If you're if you're Cannoneer and you're striking options, and and look, the last diverse and capable striker that Cannoneer faced, Robert Whitaker, took it to him with the jab and mixing in some strikes, and Cannoneer didn't go for one single takedown in that fight. Now Whitaker has really great takedown defense, if you ask me. 
Yoel Romero had a lot of trouble taking him down. And Romero doesn't really use offensive wrestling in MMA anyway. But point being, the last guy that Cannoneer faced, it was a real diverse striker. He didn't go for any takedowns, and he lost. I think there's going to be a change in Cannoneer's strategy. I really do. And I think that he can't. He has to avoid it looking like the Paulo Costa fight, where he's just frozen and letting Adesanya get off with one-strike pot shots and pick him apart. I don't think Cannoneer mentally, and I don't mean to be disparaging about um, about Paulo Costa at all, because he's a monster, right? Especially at 185, he was a monster. But I just think that Jared Cannoneer has the mental wherewithal and the strategic maturity to come in and say, I'm not going to allow myself to be picked apart like that. And therefore, I think he will actually go for some takedowns and try to threaten this guy some. And I think it will, I think it will be interesting, to be honest with you. I, do I, would I pick Jared Cannonier in this fight? No, I would pick Israel Adesanya. At 185, I think he's the best there is right now. I think he's right up there with Anderson Silva in terms of all-time 185 talent. You know, as a prime guy, you ca you cannot pick against Israel Adesanya. It's very difficult to do that. Um, he has to avoid making it. He, being Adesanya, has to avoid you know going to the ground if Cannonier is going to come in with that strategy. We'll find out early. We will really find out early. He's got to pressure and try to land the right hand somehow. And to me, the best way for him to do it is to threaten with the takedown early, get Adesanya reacting to it, and then level change and throw the right hand. I will officially pick Adesanya by third round finish if Cannonier is unable to get any early takedowns. And if he can't you know, pressure and change the balance and make it look closer to the Blahovich adesanya fight at light heavyweight. If, if Cannoneer can't do either of those things um, and make it look like you know, Adesanya's only loss in professional MMA, then I'll pick Adesanya by third-round finish. Let me know what you guys think of my breakdown. I know I really only focused on Jared Cannoneer here. Uh, I'll try later in the week to go look at uh, uh, Adesanya's most recent three fights and have a video about what he may do to try to combat the possibility of Cannoneer with that pressure, takedown, level change, and then level change to strike um, format or structure of, of his strategy. And, and, and hopefully, you know, it's something that's interesting and compelling to you guys. Let me know what you think of my prediction, what you think of the preview, and what your, you know, conception is in terms of who do you think will win this fight at UFC 276. Appreciate you guys checking out the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already.